it's that time of the week again. It's time for Chit Chat Across the Pond. This is episode number 802 for November 12th, 2024, and I'm your host, Allison Sheridan. Hey, this week, I uh, welcome back to the show again, Adam Angst. I'm afraid we may not be doing so much giggling during this episode, maybe <laughs> more of a fish shake and parcel solution, right, Adam? <laughs> yeah, this, was, this is not one of those ones that I'm happy about in any way, shape, or form. I'm afraid they're going to start thinking that we are cranky together because we were <laughs> cranky about the uh, constant interruptions about uh, looking at our screens and everything. But uh, this one, there is, there's no way around this one being a terrible story. So uh, let's start with, on October 24th, you wrote an article entitled, Exposé Reveals Ongoing Smartphone Location Tracking Threats over on Tidbits. And I've got a link to it in the show notes so people can read the whole thing. We've known for a long time that advertisers track us around the internet. So what is this new discovery? What what broke recently? Well, in in retrospect, in some ways it's not so much of a of a of a of a, of a discovery. It's that it's more widespread and easier to use than we thought. So what we're talking here is location tracking. Physical world location tracking. So this is the, hey, I just saw that you're in the coffee shop. Um, and, and oh, look, you go to that coffee shop every day? How interesting. Um, so um, there, was a, there was a privacy advocacy company um, uh, called Atlas Privacy. And they were looking at suing um, uh, this, this, this company called Babel Street, which does a location thing. And, and so in the process of, of sort of getting started on this, uh, they wanted to see if, you know, kind of you know, look into what Babel Street's tool called LocateX could do. And so they asked if they could use it. And, and the and Babel Street basically said, yeah, sure. Um, okay. <laughs> so and they said, you know, like, oh, well, it's only for law enforcement. Are you, are you, are you planning to do any work for the government? And they're like, yeah, we are actually. Um, so they weren't even lying, you know, no, no problem. Um, and so they got full access to this tool. And so they went to town. They're like, we can look up anything. And they did. And so they looked up all sorts of locations of people and identified classes of people who can be tracked and things like that. And it was, it was remarkable how easy it was. And so then this Atlas Privacy Group brings in um, a bunch of media, um, uh, 404 Media, Krebs on Security, a um, number of others, New York Times. I don't think the New York Times has written about it yet, unfortunately, unlike the others. Um, they've been busy with some other little thing that's been happening in the world, I think. Um, mm. But uh, but so in any event, this 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 hit the news in a bit in kind of a big way because I think people have sort of known that this was possible, but they didn't realize just how easy it was or how easily granular? the location. Yeah, yeah, granular. Like how easily any given person could be targeted. Because the problem is, is all this, all this data is anonymized, right? They don't actually know um, that you're this dot on the map. But come on, we all go to the same places all the time, including, say, our houses mm -hmm. and our offices. And, you know, so if you know anything about someone, you can, um, you can, and you can find them in this look on, you know, on the map, well, then you can follow them around, you know, that, that that device has been identified and you can attach that back to a person pretty easily. So Apple is, uh, has given us a way to obfuscate that it's us, right? It's supposed to only be cohorts or words like that that mean anonymous groups. But I think what I understood from your article is that they can look at, say, a specific place like the parking lot of a courtroom from a trial. So there's yeah. a trial going on. The people parking in the parking lot are either lawyers, judges, or they're in the jury box. I suppose they could also be witnesses or, or uh, <laughs> defendants. Well, um, but you could start it, tracking people based on that to figure out who they are. And in fact, in the particular example that, that they, they came up with, there is a parking lot specifically for jurors. Mm. So it wasn't okay, so even really even narrow. Even Really narrow, right? And you know, so so that was that was pretty, you know, pretty telling. I mean, again, you know, you're in a you're doing a mob you're doing a mob trial. You do not want your jurors identified, right? Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. that's a that's a bad thing. And Speaking so, of bad things, they were also looking at um, abortion clinics, 
And yeah, since this- there's some laws going into place that'll that'll punish people who help someone go get an abortion, you can you can now track people like that, and that that's yeah. terrifying. Well, and and again, it was it's even it's it's even worse than that in the sense of like they they could track a car from the abortion abortion clinic and then basically watch it go back over a state border to a state that does not allow you to do this, right? You know, and then watch where it basically where it parks. And so, so now they know you went home. And you know, Babel Street says, "Oh, you know, not everyone can get this," which is true, but they absolutely give it to law enforcement. Right. So, and with the governments know, so it, of some of these states putting in these arcane and horrible laws. Wow. Yes, precisely. So, um, you know, some other examples they, they, they came up with were they, they could very easily, of course, um, track uh, hundreds of hundreds of people at a, uh, a temple in uh, a synagogue in Los Angeles and a mosque in Detroit. Yeah. Um, you know, you can figure out where people are there. Um, oh, and you know, like just just to be clear, there was a whole lot of you know, so like I think they found like seven hundred devices at a high school in Philadelphia. Like so they can now track they're children. tracking the children, right? Yeah, precisely. Right. I mean, so so again, like you know, like the four hundred four media uh, reporter who, who he chose to to kind of focus on the abortion um, example, mm-hmm. um, but you know. There's just so many other wrong issues where wrong things like the jurors is a really good one, um, you know, or, you know, like, again, you should not be able to track, you know, high school kids. Yeah. Well, and, and the fact <laughs> that the, you can say, oh, yeah, I'm going to use it for law enforcement. You can just get it. So remember one of the one of the laws, um, I'm not going to call out any states in particular, but was basically was a vigilante law that you could get paid for turning somebody in who went to get an abortion. So now right. you can use this tool to say, I'm going to go make me a thousand dollars by using this tool to go find someone who went and had an ab- abortion. And, and you, I mean, all, and you can be, you know, like I don't know, a, you know, a, a low-level deputy in somewhere halfway across whatever the state this is, and decide this is going to how you're going to supplement your income. Right. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, the, there's just the, the the potential for abuse is just way, way too high. And this, of course, assumes that these people are actually trying hard to even restrict it to law enforcement. Whereas, I mean, the Atlas Privacy people got in so easily by just sort of asking if they could test it out. Um, yeah. And so it really yeah. doesn't take much to, to, to see that, oh, wow, this probably isn't that well protected. I do like that the broad-based um, examples make you realize, you know, it's really easy to say, well, it's not going to be me because I'm not going to get an abortion, so I'm not going to worry about it. But, right. oh, wait, I go to church, I go to the synagogue, I go to my, uh, my mosque, my children go to school, I might be on a jury. You know, when you, when you do this, you start painting the picture of, yeah, it can be you. Right. Um, it can so, be you. And, and, and again, law enforcement doesn't have to, I mean, like, this isn't stuff you need warrants for necessarily once you've got max, I mean, I the way they're talking about it once the you know once a department has gotten access to this so mm. it doesn't take a whole lot of corruption or you know bending Ill of the intent. rules with ill intent to like well I'm, i i want to find i want to find out you know where where that person's going i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna check up on them you know and yeah you know there's just a, there's a lot of people who could fall into that category and use it for malicious purposes in some ways even if they have legitimate access do we know where they got all this data or is it just because <laughs> of this cohort sort of thing that the data is available? Right. So, so basically, um, Brian Krebs has, has talks about this, that this, all this data is available on exchanges. So every data collection broker or you know, every group that collects this kind of data packages it up and puts it on exchange. For people to, but for other companies like this to buy, and oh, okay. and so it's just so in essence it's, it's a soup it, of right. It's in essence traded around, and mm-hmm. and so you know anything they can do to fingerprint devices, you know, even if they don't know exactly who it is, they know that it's this device, and the more they can connect that up between the data sets, 
And then what? I mean, because Babel Street doesn't actually collect this stuff, as I understand it. There, there, there are sip, there, there are assembling sources from all over. So they make it easy to to dig into right. it and and find ways to use it. Precisely, and so so you know, again, kind of one of the one of the issues is like we we think with privacy, oh, you should have the opportunity to opt out. Well, good luck. You don't have a relationship with any of these people. Like you don't have a relationship, you yeah. know, all the way down till and you know the the you know you know bouncing candy click button uh, <laughs> app that you you know you you thought was so so much fun, you know, but in fact was you know showing you ads and that's why it was free and those ads were in sharing a location every time you use the app. That kind of thing is 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 where it's happening. Okay, so you wrote a second article, which is uh, now we're going to switch a little bit from doom and gloom to is there any hope? Is there anything we can do about yeah. this? So you wrote an article this week entitled Protect Yourself Against Location Tracking Abuses. And one of the first thing you talk about is that there are there are alternative tools to use that maybe don't track you. Talk a little bit about those. Well, so Apple has, it's not so much tools, but Apple has a lot of settings. Um, and to be, to be fair, you know, one of the things that um, the Atlas privacy people said was they felt that they could, they could see about 80% of Android phones and about 25% of iPhones. Oh, so, why so much fewer on, on Because iOS? Apple makes it a whole lot easier to turn some of this stuff off. Hmm. Um, so we, but you still have to do the turning off. So before and, we get into the turning off though, back up and explain, you talked about, um, mobile advertising ID. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so the idea, you, the problem, the way we're identified most of the time is via uh, something like email address or phone number. I mean, names are kind of terrible if you think about it. Most people have fairly mm -hmm. common names that are happen all over the place. But email addresses, phone numbers tend to be more unique. And so that's the way people are, have long been identified. Um, but the problem with that, of course, is that those are really, really attached to people. Um, you don't want to be getting... Um, the uh, uh, you know you want to be getting people's email addresses and phone numbers in your databases. Sure. And so Apple and Google um, came up with this thing called a mobile advertising ID um, or MAID. They actually have different different names for it. Um, I forget what Google's is exactly called. Apple's is called um, the Identifier for Advertisers or IDFA. And that is um, a unique ID that goes to your device. Yeah, your iPhone, your iPad, and it cannot be it can't be changed until oh, iOS okay. 14. It actually you could change it, uh, but Apple pulled back on that, and um, and so um, because in iOS 14 we also got um, something called app tracking transparency, which is the thing that Facebook and company hate about Apple. Uh, I'll talk about that in a second. But so so the idea is is that. Everything that you know, needs to be connected to a device will have this ID, ID associated with it. And so they don't know it's you, but they do know it's this ID. And okay. so what the and, – and then because you have a different one for every device, what the – part of what all of these data collection companies are trying to do is connect the devices. So if you, you, know, you browse from your Mac, you browse from your iPhone, you browse from your iPad, well, those are different devices, but they want to they wanna make sure they've got all of them associated with you. And so there's a whole lot of um, uh, fingerprinting, basically, that goes on to try to say, oh, yeah, yeah. maybe. Triangulation, and it's like, well, we identified that this, you know, the person who did this, then this, then this. So that means even though they did it from different, different machines, that's probably the same person. Right. And so that's that's kind of what these 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 uh, data brokers are are doing is collecting that information and attempting to to f distill it down to people. Basically, they don't really care exactly who you are, but they want to make sure they've got all of your traffic uh, collected so that they can better target you <laughs> with ads. It's kind of what it comes down to. But a lot of that will also include location because some of that targeting is well, if you're going to walk into our store. Then we want to, you know, we want to be able to, you know, to give you a to give you a deal. So we care about what your location is. Okay. All right. So now Apple gives us app tracking transparency. Is that the thing that says ask app not allowed or to be allowed yeah. to track? Yeah. Yeah. Ask app. Ask apps um, not to track. And um, and so 
or, or sorry, allow apps to request to track is actually what the setting is, call, is called. And, and if you go into settings, privacy, and security, um, and um, you can turn it turn off this allow apps to request to track. Um, and everyone should do that. There is no reason any app should ever request to track. And if they do, they're slime. So I chose the other option, and I'm trying to find out what it's called, but where they get to ask and I get to say no, so I know they're yeah. slimy. Yeah, yeah. So you, you can turn that on. Um, I mean, if you turn on allow apps to request to track, then every time you launch an app that does that, you will be prompted and you the can first deny time. it. The first time. The first time, not first every time. time. Not every time. Um, and I you mean, can always come in. Right. And you can always come into that privacy and security screen to see, um, you know, if they're tracking, to see if, um, uh, they're, they're, see if they've got access. And so I do the same thing as you, actually. I leave it on. And so that I can, I, I can identify the, the slime balls. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, part of it is I feel powerful when I go, no, you dirtbags. You don't need to know where I live. That is not important information for this thing that's going to play a song or, you know, make yes. a meme or something. I'm, I'm not going to, you don't need to know where I live to do that. Well, but if you're a map application, yes. Right. Precisely. Um, and well, well, actually, mm, there's no, no, there's two different things going on here. We're not up to mapping applications yet. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. This is literally just advertising. And this is one of the mm. criticisms of app tracking transparency is that it's in fact only aimed at advertising and only what's co- only sharing between companies. Um, so it's oh, like I was third conflating parties. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this yeah. is the third party cookie tracking. Right. This is the third party cookie tracking and that kind of stuff. Um, okay. And that's really important, um, nonetheless, because that's that's partly how you how they connect your location to your ID. Because um, if they know that I went off and did something else and they know my ID, then they know can start figuring more things out about precisely, me. Okay. Precisely. Um, okay. So, so you, but this, this app tracking transparency is what they think is why 80% of Android phones, but only 25% of iPhones are being tracked through this, um, these nefarious means we've been talking about. Yes, precisely. Um, basically, okay. I mean, it comes down to the fact that Google's an advertising company. And so, mm-hmm. you know, they're not going to make it as easy to turn this stuff off. Um, you know, that sure. they can say things left and right, but, uh, but the fact of the matter is that's where they make their money Followed and money. And to, to an extent, you know, Apple's not entirely in the clear here either, because, you know, they have plenty of advertising systems built into Apple stuff as well, the app store and whatnot. And, um, and so, you know, and, and they, it's a, Apple used to let you change your, your, your ID, um, regularly. And so that was actually a good thing back in iOS 14. It was like, yeah, change it. Screw you. <laughs> I'm a new person now. Deal with it. Okay. Um, and so, but, uh, but yeah, so everyone should turn off, allow apps to request a track. Or if you do want to see, identify the slime balls, um, you know, leave that on and then just turn it, you know, deny request each time it comes up. I'm forgetting where this is. So I'm in privacy and security. Uh, uh, there's location services. Uh, but no, then, it's, it's um, higher up than that. Yeah, just, just, that's uh, at the very top of privacy and security. Privacy and security. Privacy and security. It's, it's, it's right below location services and tracking. Okay, the next thing below location services is calendars, contacts, files and folders, blah, blah, all the Apple apps. And then below that I get to, oh, are you on your phone? That's yeah. the problem. That makes more ah. sense. Oh, yeah, yeah. I thought they were tracking me around on my Mac. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I realized it. Look, here's another good reason to use, um, for us to actually use video is I saw Adam look down at his hand. I'm like, why isn't he looking at his Mac? That's because it's in a different oh, place. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Privacy and security. There it is. Tracking. Zero. Yes. Yeah. I have none. Yes. And I have none. allow apps to ask, and then I know you're a slime ball. Yeah. And I've got a whole lot of them here, I have to say. Um, I mean, okay. the problem is it's often used- easily. You, oh, I've got, uh, yeah, I've got a ton. And, and the problem is a lot of them you, you might need, um, you know. Not so for tracking for though, right? But not for tracking, but you might need the app is my point. Um, right. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've got uh, you know, a lot of legit apps in here. Yeah, I mean, precisely. Starbucks for crying out loud. I can't live without that. So, <laughs> but they don't get to track um, me. So, so the first step, I guess, would be to look in and make sure that you, at the very least, are allowing them to ask. 
And if not, just shutting it down and don't let it do right. it. And if you see tracking, you see a number that's not zero, go in and turn it off. Right, right. Um, simple fact is, no sympathy, they don't need it. And, and, and to, be, to be clear, particularly with little apps, the developer may not even, they should realize, of course, but mm -hmm. there are third-party libraries that a lot of developers will use. They want to have some feature in their app, and they can get it by installing this library. Um, mm -hmm. But that library may come with additional things built into it. And so okay. it's not inconceivable the developer could actually have done this and um, and then not and sort of not realize that it's going to be doing some of these bad things. In theory, okay. that shouldn't happen because like they should be testing it like a normal user. But nonetheless, the point is, is that it, it's not it's not guaranteed malicious intent on the part of the developer. It is guaranteed malicious event on the part of the libraries. I appreciate so. your generous spirit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah. Th so tracking uh, is one thing. That's the fingerprinting online, um, right? And and looking in the cross site uh, uh, tracking, but then we've got to talk about location, right? Yeah, because that's the other thing, right? Because location, I mean, just having the tracking is not going to get you location. So remember, mm -hmm. tracking is, is is literally the it's the advertising and IDs and stuff like that. That is not going to get location. That's a separate thing. So that's in settings, privacy, and security, location services, um, and um, and in there you will see every app that can use location, and it's going to be a long list because there's it a whole is. lot. That's of them. a small scroll bar. Yeah, precisely, um, and so. That's one, you know, here it's not an easy answer because, as you said, a mapping app, of course it needs access. Like, there's, right? It's, it's reason for existing. And there's mm -hmm. and the other big one that some people don't quite think about actually is weather apps. Um, weather apps are, are a situation where they, they don't desperately need to know exactly where you are to give you a basic forecast, but if you want a hyper-local forecast... And particularly if you want alerts of like storms coming in, that kind of thing, that's when you start having to grant more access to them. So let's let's talk about a couple of these. Um, if I look at the weather app and in particular, it seems like depending on what kind of an app it is, it might be asking, there might be different options of what kind of access. So when we yes. look at, a, at the Apple weather app, the, op, the options for location access um, are never ask next time or when I share. I'm not quite sure what share means. Yeah, honestly, I'm not 100% sure okay. either. <laughs> then there's while using the app, then there's while using the app or widgets. So like yeah. I've got a weather widget. I don't know why, because it's always 68 degrees here. It's sunny. <laughs> um, but I have a weather widget on my home screen. So I would need that on if I want to see it there. And then always. Always yeah. would be something maybe to never choose. I mean, there might be certain certain things might want it, like find so my... No, so always, no, the always, the only thing I have set to always, in fact, is carrot weather, um, because I want those hyperlocal notifications. Okay. So, so because. So I would put it on an earthquake notifier, for example. Right. That would you be. You would put, put it on be, a weather right. app. Right, because um, right because the well the earthquake um, does that need well I, we don't get notice anyway. Oh. It's oh, okay. if there ever was a good one. I mean, they've got <laughs> one called Shake Alert, but. Yeah. Anyway. Um, but so, right. So, so the point is, is that at what point does an app need to know where you are when it's not running? Okay. And, and the answer is almost never. And that the hyperlocal notif weather, weather alerts is the only good example I've been able to come up with. Because even mapping apps, even like Google Maps, and Apple Maps, and all those kinds of things, they don't need to know where, where you are when they're not running. Um, you right. know, they're, they're, you're, you're using them kind of by definition. Um, well, so let's, let's talk about the last thing. So those were the, the five different levels for location right. access to the weather app. Then below that, it says precise location. Now, if I'm yes. doing a mapping app, I would like precise location. I don't want it to say, okay, she's somewhere in Los Angeles. <laughs> Good luck finding the 405. Um, but if I'm doing weather, I don't actually need precise location because I don't think whether there's a cloud over my head is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for something more regional, <laughs> right? I mean, do we have any idea how big precise location is um, when it's turned so, off? 
We, yeah, we have some general ideas, but clearly it's 68 degrees and sunny where you are all the time. Um, <laughs> we, we get what we call pop-up thunderstorms. Um, okay. So you will, if, you, if you look at the radar and you zoom out in a weather app, you will see these tiny little pop-ups. And so it can rain here and be dry a mile away. Um, okay, so you might and, want precise weather. So I, I might do not. want precise location. Yeah, so so I've done some research into this, and the best I can come up with is that precise location gets you between five and sixty meters, so fifteen to two hundred feet. So that oh, wow. you really want, for instance, like if you're going to use a ride sharing app like Uber or Lyft, you know, yeah, they you need want to know where you are at the right bar up. when you're stumbling out the door. Precisely. <laughs> um, um, you know, a camera app, you know, if you're going to, if you, if you like having the GPS location attached to your photos, sure. Um, sure. You know, good, good use. Um, the approximate location, if you turn that off is somewhere between four and 20 kilometers or two and a half to 12 miles. So, okay. you know, so, so, so you are correct that actually for most people, web, that would probably be fine for weather apps. Right. I mean, I know Bart showed me the radar map for uh, for where he lives. He lives uh, in a small town outside of Dublin, and he showed me the weather map. And there was a there was a, a rain gl- blob. It was covering Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't mean like a little bit of Ireland. It was covering Ireland. He goes, I guess I won't go out for a bike ride right now. <laughs> There's a reason they call it the Emerald Isle because <laughs> it rains all the time and the grass is really green. Oh, I gotta uh, tell you, when we visited there, it was like like the cones in our eyes were burning from so much green because we hadn't seen green. You know, we don't have that much of that color here. We got a little bit of it, but it's muted. You know, a little more in the brown scale. When when my when my sister first moved to California years and years and years ago, um, and I went to visit her at some point, we were driving around and and uh, I was like. You know, and and says so because it's you know the, the golden state, and uh, mm-hmm. and she's like because that sounds better than the dead brown state. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, we're not joking about this. Steve just pulled up our weather station the other day and looked at the last measurable rainfall, and it was in April. It's <laughs> oh, November. <Jesus. laughs> So anyway, yeah. Now yeah. that we're done with this week in weather, but, so <laughs> now I think I understand those. But it's interesting that the <clears throat> changing the allow location access is different depending on the app. Um, for example, we've got a unistellar telescope, and it needs to know where the telescope is in order to draw the star to be able to mm-hmm. navigate itself to the stars correctly. And under allow location access, there's only three things: never ask this next time or when I share and while using the app. I made sure it's while using the app, but I turned off precise location because I'm pretty sure within 12 miles Andromeda is probably in the same place. <laughs> I mean, if it yeah. stops working well, I can change it, right? Yeah, yeah, precisely. Um, so, right. So the so those other um, the other options. Um, uh, there's really there's really well, okay. If you know location access is totally fine because the app requires it to do what it's supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Then your choices really come down to while well, using the app or while well, using the app and widgets. And it, that's only a question if you use its widgets. So again, right. like, you know, carrot weather, I like its weather widgets. So I, I let it do the wit, you know, I'm happy to have it do widgets. Google maps mm-hmm. has widgets. I mean, Apple maps have widgets, those kinds of things. But if he doesn't have widgets, either won't give you the option, won't give you the option. And if you don't use the widgets, you can just say while well, using the app. Because obviously the widgets are using, will be triggered much more frequently. Right. right. Every time every time you look at a widget uh, on the home screen or lock screen, it'll trigger a location call. So, okay. so, so most of the time, the good apps you know, who, who really need it, just choose while using the app. You know, totally reasonable. Right. That's what they're there for. Um, now, what I, I I actually use the ask next time or when I share as my sort of default when I'm not sure. Because oh yeah, so when like, right at the moment it asks, you could go oh oh oh, oh I see yeah, why you oh, want oh that's it. okay yeah right that's totally fine yeah, or, or what the hell heck, no. you know <laughs> <laughs> go away you know <laughs> so um, I have a question. Um, when I'm sitting in the chair having my nails done by my nail salon, the the last thing I do is I bring up my banking app and I pay through Zelle inside my banking app. Okay? okay. When I open, when I start to search, my banking app is the first thing available 
if I'm sitting in that chair at my nail salon. Now, That's Siri. Right. But so if if Siri or the, the Apple s- s- ecosystem itself knows where I am and it has this unique tracking identifier that isn't that exposable or do we believe that that's hidden on device? Um, I, I think it's I think Apple knows it, um, but I don't think Apple shares it. So Apple, oh, Apple no. almost undoubtedly is, is safe in this regard because Apple has no interest in in like data data collection brokers and things like that. That's not where Apple makes its money. So, but you can turn that off. So at the very, very bottom of that huge list of apps that want location services, you'll mm-hmm. find system system services. And if you scroll through that, you'll see oh, suggestions look, look and all search. Those. Yeah, precisely. And again, huh. most of these are fine. Like, of course, compass calibration and device management and satellite Emergency connection. Calls. Right. Find I mean, all this phone. stuff should should be should be uh, turned on. Like, I have all this stuff turned on. In fact, um, I should think about that a little. But but just in general, they're all totally fine. Um, but suggestions and search is where Siri says, "Ah, every time she's in this chair, she wants to use Zell." Okay, and it so some of these have a little. Uh, so now, to, to, to be clear again, where where we've gone is uh, let me back up. So we're in settings. Privacy and security, security, location services. We've gone down to the bottom to yeah. system services. And now we have a list of things and they've all got toggles. Some of them have the location icon. So yes. uh, suggestions in search has the location icon. So that that's saying it knows I'm sitting in the chair at the salon. Right. Yeah, and just okay. so people know, there's there's two there's um there's two icons. There's like a purple one, which means it's recently done it, and a gray one, meaning it's done it in the last 24 hours. Oh, that uh, just means it has done it. So the toggle really does mean location, allowing yes. location. Right. Okay, I thought just the ones with the little icon meant um, uh, location. Yeah. Yeah. So for instance, like for me, Wi-Fi calling, it the, the toggle's turned on, but it hasn't asked for my location in the last 24 hours. So that's why it doesn't okay. have a little arrow, arrow next to it. I don't know if Okay, so to be clear, to if the toggle <clears throat> is on, then whatever we're seeing in this list has access to my location. Mm-hmm. If it has a gray location icon, that means it's used it in the last 24 hours. If it has a purple location icon, that means it's used it more recently. Recently? <laughs> recently. Very, I don't know. More, recent. than, more recently than 24 hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Prob- probably, okay. you know, you know, last hour, something like that. Okay. Find my phone. Yes. Because my, I'm asking it with my watch every five seconds. Where are you? Um, <laughs> oddly, I have Wi-Fi couch. calling turned off. So let's, let's walk through an example there. Wi-Fi calling doesn't have access to my location for some reason. It's the only one that's off. What does that mean? Why would Wi-Fi calling need to know where I am? Imagine that you are somewhere that does not have cellular access, but does have a Wi-Fi network. Yeah. So that's a situation where Wi-Fi calling might need to know your location. Um, one of the things that Wi-Fi calling... Maybe for 911. Yeah, maybe for, it was, was going to say for 911 or possibly yeah. um, to, uh, you know, like other kinds of cellular location-y things. So... Well, cell, cell network search is a separate one. Yeah, cell network search is a separate one. But the, I mean, we're, we're assuming there's no cell network. Um, oh, and it's looking for one. And, and it needs to could know be my location. Uh, I was going to say, I mean, the 911 is the best example there. But even then, I think via Wi-Fi calling, you usually enter a, a specific address that's supposed to go with your location when you're using Wi-Fi calling. That's kind of interesting because I recently had a, a gentleman on uh, Chit Chat, uh, a guy from GigSky who is a network uh, operator for eSIMs. So you're on travel and you want another eSIM. And one of the things he talked about was a trick to be able to use your home phone number, say, to get SMS messages, like to be able to authenticate to your bank when you're on travel, but you don't want any roaming charges. And he said to turn off, to call your provider at home and say, I want no chance of roaming, turn it off, make sure nothing is possible. And when you're on, a, at least on a GigSky card, if you have Wi-Fi calling turned on, you can allow your phone to receive messages and it thinks it's on it thinks it's on Wi-Fi. 
even though it is Wi-Fi calling works over cellular, which is kind of a weird thing. But I'm wondering whether if I turn that Wi-Fi calling location on, it might stop that from working. (laughs) Getting really wrapped around the axle there. So, it, what? so one thing that one thing I just wanted to say is if you go in and look at um, uh, look at any of these items when they ask, they will have an explanation of why they want your location. So, for instance, here's the Wemo app, which is I have a couple of Wemo smart switches, mm-hmm. and it wants to know my location. Wemo needs location to continue. We do not store, share, or sell your location data. That's a bad answer. Yeah, continue. Uh, Continue. That is a bad answer. Bad Wemo. Not no no access for you. Um, <laughs> then we've got um, oh let's see do, 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 do. Um, here's voice memos is Apple, but voice memos will be named with a location where they are recorded. Oh. It's kind of cool. I mean, which is true, you know. So like, wait, do you, you have that under location services? Yeah. My, yeah, I not, don't the, not the system service, not, not, not system services, just location, location services. services. Yeah. Yeah. I do not have voice memos in there. I wonder if I just haven't launched it in a while. Huh? Conceivable. Hmm. So um, I have an app. There's also an app called Vivino, some kind of wine. Oh app. yeah. And it's expl- explanation is see wines available in your area. <laughs> and I'm like, well, no. <laughs> okay. But you know, when you want to know, does my wine, you know, uh, connect me to my wine and more. There could be value to you. You could make that choice, but maybe not. You can probably look it up yourself. Uh, I mean, Starbucks says, easily order ahead, get directions, and see what's available at nearby stores. Precise location is used to ensure orders are fresh when you arrive. Mm. Just saying. N- so No. No, I don't, I don't <laughs> buy that. I don't buy that because you order yep. from home. They start making it. <laughs> they don't wait to see if I'm close and go, oh, let's make it for Allison now. Yeah, I turned off precise location on that one. And I yeah. I changed it to while using the app. Because right. it does give you the suggestions, your favorites in order to, you know, find them near me, which is a yeah. critical thing to know when you need your Starbucks. Now, now this, was, this was my poster child for this one was um, the Canon print app. I have a wireless battery powered Canon Pixma printer that I use for race printing results. Um, enabling the use of precise location information may help when trying to solve printer connectivity issues. Location information will not be sent to Canon. <laughs> like, sorry. Like, I believe you one bit that that you need to know exactly where I am, but we're not. But <laughs> but that's going to help you troubleshoot something. Yeah, the right. The, pr- the paper's jammed. Oh, you know what? We know exactly where your house is. Right? <laughs> so, how are you seeing those? You're going into something and it, it, like you turn it off. For- no, it is for each app. Um, oh, when, I see. It's written services, in small things. Just select one and, and look, look underneath where it says, you know, allow location access. It's the app explanation. Oh, Sky Guide. That's a, a thing for looking at constellations. It says app yeah. explanation. Sky Guide uses your location to send notifications about astronomical events visible in your area. Nuh-uh. <laughs> I don't need that. I just changed it to never. Yes. Because Sky Guide, I think if I hold, because Sky Guide is one of those things you hold your phone up in the air and you kind of wiggle it around and it uses the gyroscope and it figures out where stuff is. I'll find out whether it actually works the next time. But I don't so, need yeah. notifications. Right. So there's there's never any harm in saying never. Um, and, um, you know, if, if, you know, basically the app will tell you, you know, we'll just not do something and it will have to ask you again. But certainly you could, what I like to do is whenever it's periodically, whenever the summer like this comes up, I go through and make ever switch everything that I'm uncertain about to ask me next time. And because then I'm like, well, Oh yeah, that's reasonable. Or what the hell? This is just a dumb excuse, you know, that you sort of, you were making, you say, you said something in your actual app explanation and that's not it. It's so, no, or it's insufficient. Insufficient, right, right. Bad, so bad So some example. you can tell, no, you guys are big, fly, fat, flying dirt bags. never. <laughs> but some you're like, eh, give me a little more. And that's the ones that you change to ask next time. Precisely. And I don't know okay. why it says, or when I, when I share. I, I mean, do people share apps? I mean, I guess they Yeah, sure, can. what? Yeah, I, I think it's like literally when you, because I mean, like if you're on the home screen on your phone, and um, and you and you select you know you long press on a on an app, um, you can share it. But I've never really heard of people doing this. I'm asking Chat GPT. 
<laughs> Let's see if it has any explanation. Um, means the app doesn't get blanket access instead of the or at the time you choose to share. When I share, some apps have specific features tied to location sharing, like posting your location to a map within a shared post. When the settings enabled, the app only requests your location when you choose to use a sharing feature that requires it. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So it sounds like it's a blanket toggle instead of having separate toggles for both to confuse us. They put them together to confuse us. Yeah. Right. Right. I mean, I guess yeah. right. If you share, there are some apps where you share your location, um, and so that might be that you know. So any of that. Yeah. You know what's annoying um, is if you choose that option instead of. When you're at the big list, instead of it saying ask next time, it says when I share. So that the one toggle yeah. is ask next time or when I share, but what it calls it is when it's shared. When share. Yeah. No, yeah, that's kind of annoying. Yeah. Um, yeah. Boy, the, Ameri the American one, they have a long explanation. This app can use your location information while you're using the app to find airports and to provide traffic information on your day of travel. And we'll keep going. And like the app can use your location while running the background to customize the information about your flights based on where you are located. For example, you'll see more pertinent information when you were at the airport as opposed to when you were elsewhere. So I got to <laughs> tell you, I don't believe American because American's bad at it. But I believe... <laughs> I will allow United to do it because, I mean, United goes, okay, I see you're at the airport. You know, you could drop your bags off at the Sky Cab here or you could uh, carry yeah. them in yourself. <clears throat> and then you check them in. It goes, okay, we, I, we've got your luggage uh, and, and they're on their way. And then they give you another one. It says, okay, your luggage is on the plane. You land. It says, okay, you're landing at your – no, it tells you your seat number. And, and when you get on the plane, it tells you what your seat number is. No, so, and I mean, turn it's, around. It's, you, pa you walked by it. <laughs> yeah, practically, practically. It's it's so freaking good. You, I mean, the plane lands and it tells you where your baggage claim is. Yeah. You don't get anything like that with American. We've just started to fly United recently and we're like, man, we, what were we missing all these years? Yeah. So, yeah. So in any event, it's um, it, this is the big one, honestly, because if the apps don't get your location, it can't get bundled up with any kind of tracking that they might do otherwise. So reduce location sharing to the extent possible. Does it work retroactively, do you think? Once, they, once they've got data points on you, they're not giving them back. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean... Oh, we're so sorry. We didn't mean it. We're really embarrassed. No, but I mean, if they don't have my location being shared by the Target app, and that's how they knew where I was, if I stop sharing the location, doesn't that data, the new data doesn't exist, right? Right. The new data won't exist, but basically... I mean, maybe so they, they know that Allison goes to Target, but right. they don't know I'm at Target now. Right. And, and things like this Babel Street Locate X tool will not know that you're there anymore. Right. Um, so it is. So, I mean, it's not retroactive, but it, it's, it's from it's, today forward. They right, don't, it's not forward. like all that data they collected means they can continue to track my location. No, 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 no. They don't get to keep tracking your location. But so this they don't, is good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely good. Shut off location services for anything that doesn't need it. Very I love simple. It. Very simple. Kill location services. <laughs> Uh, I love it. Well, I've got a link in the show notes to protect yourself against lo tra location tracking abuses by Adam Angst at tidbits.com. It's a newsletter that you should absolutely read. I don't read many newsletters, but I read what you write because it's always amazing. <laughs> and I hear there's a couple of other hacks that work there, too, that are reasonably good. Some Glenn guy, a couple of yeah, others. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some Not as good as you, but... Uh, <laughs> Not as well. We are, you know, of course, but... He just wrote about Thunderbolt 5, which I was so pleased about. I was like, oh, good. I don't need Thunderbolt 5. Thank you. That's what I need. The, the answer is you don't need Thunderbolt 5 unless you're one of these people. <laughs> I don't think I need Thunderbolt 4. I, I keep trying to justify upgrading my CalDigit TS3 Plus from Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 4, but I'm 100% certain I wouldn't know. <laughs> But I, I gotta so, go read that. I do want to learn about Thunderbolt Five. Be before we go, though, I do want to mention two more things in privacy um, and security that people need should should look at and turn off, though, really quick. Um, one is Bluetooth, um, and because lots of things will ask for Bluetooth access that don't yeah. need them, and you're like, like NBC Sports. Why does NBC Sports need to use Bluetooth access? Well, it turns out it's because you can cast to certain TVs. But here's uh -huh. the thing. When Bluetooth access is turned on, Bluetooth, um, you, other Bluetooth devices can see, um, can see you in, lo in location, right? Right. So, 
So you want to uh, disable that because they, that beacon can be picked up by other devices and used to locate you. Wow. Okay. So you know, so I again, think I act. Did you tell us to do that in the article? Because I, I appear yeah. to have done that. Yeah, yeah. And then similarly, there's something. There's another one called local network, which is the same thing, where it's totally reasonable for devices to want to see what's on your local network if they if they need to do this. But mm-hmm. if they know where you're, if they know if they know what your local network is, that can identify you as well. Just sort of like where your cable modem knows where you know roughly where you are. So all so this data good goes at into knowing the pod. what that would mean. So Hulu wants to know my local network. Does Hulu's Hulu? probably looking for other devices on your network, like um, uh, screens of some sort, probably like, uh, you know, Amazon. Another Apple um, TV? Apple TV. I don't think, well, Hulu shouldn't mm-hmm. need Apple TV for that, but um, but other, like, other smart smart TV type things. Okay, so, Nanoleaf. Uh, Nanoleaf, it's a smart light. It would need. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it would need access to your network. To the local network. Okay. To the network. network. So, so, like, I have Mixcloud and Teams. Um, I don't know why they'd need it, so I turned them off. And again, mm-hmm. anything that anything you turn off that really needs it, we'll ask again. So there's no yeah. harm in it. Um, but it's just it's like don't be sharing data that you don't know have any reason to understand why that you might need to do this. Um, okay. You know, they can maybe they can always ask again. And yeah, the default and, should be no. Leave me alone until you prove to me that you have some reason. Like there's something I want. That I can't right. have unless you give me that. Well, well and usually what that. happens is, is these things, you know, the first time you launch them, they ask for all this permission. And you're like, yeah, yeah, I don't know what you do yet. Right? So, <laughs> yeah. you know, so you're, you're, you'll, you'll agree to most anything at the, you know, the first time because you're like, I've never used this app. I don't know whether it needs Bluetooth access. My favorite are the ones on the Mac now where they're going, uh, can I have access to your calendar and contacts? No. <laughs> and, you know, and it, it's like something that turns my light on, you know. <laughs> So, I don't think you because we that. want to make sure that your contacts are able to turn your lights on too when they visit, of course, just just when they visit. And hackers in it's, Russia. <laughs> so. Exactly, exactly. Well, I appreciate uh, the uh, the public service announcement, and this makes me feel <laughs> less less powerless <laughs> to do a double yeah. negative there. Right. It's not, it's, it's not, it's not great. I mean, it's still like, so the, the, the whole Alice privacy story, there there was this, um, this couple, they were both police officers in New Jersey. And as partly with this lawsuit is in in New Jersey, they've got this, this rule, this law that says you can't track, uh, police officers or judges or people like that. Um, and so that's how they're, (laughs) that's how Alice privacy is suing. Um, Mm. but this, I mean, this police officer, like they, the woman and her husband, they were fully aware that this low tracing tracking was a thing. Um, and the guy couldn't be found, but they found the woman because she used a Macy's app. Oh, wow. And Macy's app wanted location. And, and by girl, so you mean tell- police officer, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no it, was, it was a married couple. They were both police officers. Right, um, right. And so so that was, you know, and uh, so, yeah, so it was just one of those situations where, and she, I think she'd done a lot of things right, she mm-hmm. just hadn't either. She she missed the missed the the notification from Macy's. She didn't think about it. Whatever it was, or and that it was, offered a coupon if you come close to the store. You, you never know. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, these, these particular police officers had been targeted on social media um, <sighs> for various reasons. It's kind of a ter- kind of a terrible story. So that's partly why they were so so concerned about their location being made available. Uh, wow. so yeah. Wow. So in any event, it was, uh, it was, it was an interesting, again, just, these, these stories are well worth reading. I mean, the Brian Krebs, uh, Krebs on security, um, 404 media story, um, they're just chilling. <laughs> and, and you, li- you linked all of those in your article, yeah, right? I linked all of those yeah. in my article. And, and as I, we just, you know, it's, it, it's one of those things where realistically the only solution is going to be legislation. Because we have to make this not legal to do. Right, you know, right. As long as it's legal to do, these companies are going to be doing it because they've found they can make money at it, even if it's only selling data to each other. <laughs> uh, well, I had tried to end us on a happy ending. Right there. You <laughs> took us back down into doom and gloom. Well, it, well, we fulfilled the promise, right? We said, uh, now with less giggling this week. <laughs> Yeah, less giggling. No, uh, so so I mean, the, the only thing that I the only thing that I hold hold out hope, hope for is is that you know 
you know, representatives, legislators, they're equally easily as trackable as everyone else. And so, yeah. you know, if, <laughs> if, if, right, if some of them start getting into the, wait a second, anyone can follow me around wherever I go, um, that's a real problem. Hopefully that will get their butts in gear in terms of actually, you know, putting some privacy regulations into play. All right. From your lips to Congress's ears. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming on the show. Get on man. it. Get on it. <laughs> Thanks again. Always, always fun. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Chit Chat Across the Pond Light. Did you notice there weren't any ads in the show? That's because this show is not ad supported. It's supported by you. If you learned something, or maybe you were just entertained, consider contributing to the Podfeet podcasts. You can do that by going over to podfeet.com and look for the big red button that says support the show. When you click that button, you're going to find different ways to contribute. If you'd like to do a one-time donation, you can click the PayPal button. If you want to make a recurring contribution, click the weekly Patreon button. You're only charged when I publish an episode of the NoSillaCast, which, let's face it, it's every single week, so I don't charge Patreon for Chit Chat Across the Pond Light or Programming by Stealth episodes. Another way to contribute is to record a listener contribution. It's a great way to help the NoSillaCast ways learn from you and takes a little bit of the load off of me doing all the work. If you want to contact me for any reason, you can email me at allison at podfeed.com and I really encourage you to follow me on Mastodon at podfeet at chaos.social. If you want to talk to the other NoSilla castaways, you can do that in our Slack group at podfeet.com slash Slack. Thanks for listening and stay subscribed.